welcome to Sunday School. We hope you have a great time with us this morning. Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday School. Well, we were last here at Easter and that seems a long time ago now, doesn't it, Wuffles? There's an awful lot happened since then. We've had some time off work and school for May Day and also for the King's coronation. That was exciting, wasn't it? So we enjoyed it, didn't we? So what do we do? <coughs> TV, yes, we watched it on TV. That was one thing we, we did. What was your favourite bit? <coughs> Seamus, yeah, Seamus the Irish Wolfhound. Did you see Seamus? He was the only dog in the parade. That was a really big honour, wasn't it? Would you have liked that honour? Yeah, um, but I'm not sure you would have done it quite as well as Seamus because he was good at marching in line. And maybe that's not something you'd have been quite so good at. Yeah, perhaps not. Uh, but anyway, it was a great honour for Seamus. And there was something else we enjoyed as well, wasn't there? <coughs> park walk. Yes, we went down to the park. And uh, because it was a sunny day on the Sunday of the coronation weekend, we went to the park and it was lovely, but there were lots of people, weren't there? And lots of dogs. And who did we see? <coughs> big dogs. Yes, we did. We saw two great Danes. They're really big dogs, aren't they? And they belong to somebody I know and they have them as guard dogs. So Wuffles was a little bit scared, weren't you? And you hid behind my legs to start with, didn't you? And you didn't want to come out. But you did get braver when I went to talk to them. And guess what? What did you find? <coughs> yeah, they were friendly, weren't they? So that was nice. So although they look scary, you've actually made two new friends. And that's Brutus and Laura, isn't it? The Great Danes. So that's lovely for Wuffles to have made some new friends and particularly when you didn't think you'd be friends with them, did you? You were too frightened. Well today there's somebody in our story who was a little bit frightened. Well perhaps a bit more than a bit frightened. He was very frightened of going to talk to some people. His name was Jonah so we're going to watch a cartoon and find out what happened to him now. Heroes of the Bible, Jonah. This is Jonah. Uh -huh. Jonah was a prophet. That means it was his job to tell people what God told him to say. Yep. One day, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh because the people of Nineveh were doing bad things. Uh... But instead, Jonah ran away. Where are you, please? and went to the port to board a ship going the other way. He was hoping to get away from God. Walmart. He sailed for a place called Tarshish. While he was at sea, God sent a great and powerful wind over the sea that caused a storm that seemed like it would break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the sailors tried everything they could think of to save the ship. Meanwhile, Jonah was sound asleep, so the captain went down and said, How can you sleep at a time like this? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will help us. Then the crew figured out that Jonah was the reason for the storm. Uh, uh -oh. And they asked him, Who are you? Why is this happening to us? Jonah told them who he was and that he worshipped the one true God who made the sea. Then he told the sailors to throw him in the sea so the storm would stop. No why? The sailors still tried to escape the storm, but it was no use. Uh... So they asked God for forgiveness and threw Jonah into the sea. The storm stopped at once. Whoa! The sailors were amazed at God's power and they vowed to serve him. 
Now God sent a great fish to swallow Jonah. Uh, great. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and nights. Jonah prayed to God from inside the fish, and God ordered the fish to spit Jonah out. Uh, yuck. God told Jonah again to go to the city of Nineveh to tell them what God had said about them. I get it, I get it. This time, Jonah obeyed God and went to Nineveh to deliver God's message. <coughs> the people of Nineveh stopped doing bad things and turned to God. They were saved because they listened to the message that God had given Jonah. Well, that was an amazing story, wasn't it? Now, Jonah, in that story, he lived a very long time ago. He lived probably about 2,700 years ago. That's roughly. And that's a long time, many hundred years before Jesus lived. So it's a very old story. But one thing we know at those times was that people didn't believe that God could talk to them directly. They had other people who spoke to God and Jonah was one of those people. So it was his job to listen to God and do what he said. However, this time Jonah wasn't at all keen on the idea. He didn't like the idea of going to Nineveh. We think there were two reasons for that. One was that he was very frightened about what the nasty Ninevans were going to do to him. They might have said nasty things to him or even maybe beaten him up and he wasn't very keen on the idea. But there was another reason as well. Jonah didn't really think it was fair that the Ninevans got a second chance. He thought they'd been so bad but it was hopeless. There was no hope for them. And he didn't really want to bother with them. But God got other ideas. Now, Jonah thought he could run away from God, which is a bit of a silly idea because God's everywhere. And I think Jonah knew that really. But anyway, he tried to escape. And with the adventures he had in the cartoon, he ended up in the middle of a fish. It was a very big fish. Now, some people call this story Jonah and the whale because they think that only a whale would be big enough to swallow a man. But there are some very big fish indeed. And we're going to find out more about that soon because we're going to do a fishy quiz. But the main point of the story to remember is the fact that God wanted to give the people in Nineveh a second chance. Even though they'd been really bad, he still loved them and he wanted to give them the chance to turn around and do good things instead of bad. And that's what he did. And in the end, Jonah had to go along with it. So let's see how you do now in our fishy quiz. Time for the fishy quiz. Jellyfish are not actually fish. True or false? True, jellyfish are not actually fish. Jellyfish have drifted along on ocean currents for millions of years, even before dinosaurs lived on the earth. But despite their name, these jelly-like creatures aren't actually fish. They're invertebrates or animals with no backbone. The biggest type of fish in the sea is a whale shark. Is it A, as long as a bus, B, as long as a car, or C, as long as a bicycle? It's A, as long as a bus, or even longer. Each whale shark has a unique pattern of spots and stripes, sort of like your fingerprints. In Britain, which fish is most commonly used in fish and chips? Is it A, salmon, B, cod, or C, tuna? It's B, cod.
cod. Did you get it right? Most cod spawn between the months of January and April and females release up to 5 million eggs. After hatching, the young cod drift in the open ocean and feed on small crustaceans. The biggest type of whale is the blue whale. The female is very heavy when fully grown. Does she weigh as much as A. 3 baby elephants, B. 3 elephants or C. 30 elephants? It was C, 30 elephants or more. Pretty much everything about the blue whale is massive. Its tongue weighs as much as an elephant, its heart is the size of a car, and its blood vessels are so wide you could swim through them. In the film Finding Nemo, what sort of fish is Nemo? Is he A, a goldfish, B, a clownfish? or see an angelfish. Yes, he's B, a clownfish. This little fish shares an amazing partnership with another sea creature, the anemone. Anemones have tentacles that sting, but the clownfish isn't bothered by them. In fact, it lives among the tentacles. The clownfish gains protection from predators, which don't dare get near the stinging protector. The anemone benefits from having the clownfish around too. The clownfish nibbles away parasites that bug the anemone. How amazing is God's creation? How did you get on in the quiz? How did you do in the fishy quiz? Wow, well done. That was really good, wasn't it? Yes, you found it quite difficult, didn't you? Were you amazed by some of those answers? Just how big a whale or a fish could be? That's really big. So I hope that helps you imagine what it must have been like for Jonah being inside. But the main thing to remember from the story is the fact that God loves everybody. He loves even people who are doing things wrong and who aren't listening to him. He loves them just as much, but he wants to give everybody the chance to say sorry and to turn to him and to start doing the right thing. So that's a great message, isn't it, that Jane had to give. So with that really big story about a big fish, I think we should have a big song. We've done this song quite a lot recently, but it's such a good one. Let's sing together, Our God is a Great Big God. Okay everyone, so I hope you've got your instruments ready, whether you've found something that shakes, something that makes a big noise, something that makes a bang, or even something that makes a bit of a tune. Um, but why don't we join in uh, with this song, Our God is a Great Big God. And if you know the actions, you need to be doing them as big as possible. Okay. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. He's higher than a skyscraper and he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than a sky.
skyscraper and he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. We love that song, don't we? It's got such great words. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. And that's really good to know, isn't it? Well, we've nearly come to the end for today, but I think Wuffles just wants to show you something before we go. It's his fish toy. Just wanted to show you because he thought it would remind you about the story of Jonah. Maybe you've got a fish toy at home or you could draw a picture of a very big fish and colour it in and that'll remind you about the story. Anyway, for now it's bye from us but David will be back in another couple of weeks with another Sunday's call and then we'll be back again after that. Bye for now.